Welcome to Knowledge Verse. This is the top 5 most deadly and awful theme park accidents. Please like and subscribe. Comment for part there are 3. More common ways to die than in theme park accidents, but few is horrible. But lessons can be learned from these accidents. Like no one will ever be held criminally liable. Don't touch people who are being electrocuted. Always read the warning and weight limit signs on rides and take them seriously and you can't rely on the teenage operators to keep you safe. It's human nature to lock the barn door only after the horses have escaped. When a ride tells you what it is, believe it. And if you're going to swim across a river, make sure you've trained in the pool before. Kings Island Amusement Park opened in Ohio in 1972, and there were no fatalities at the park in its first 19 years of operation. But luck ran out on Sunday, June 9, 1991, when death claimed three people, two guests and one employee, in two separate incidents at the park. Everything was normal until about 9 p.m., when a park guest Timothy Benning and his friend William Haithcote walked by a fountain near a bridge in the park's beer garden. Benning reached toward the water in a fountain, intending to splash his friend, but as soon as he touched the water, Benning was jolted with a powerful electrical current, knocked unconscious, and fell into the shallow water. An exposed wire was just under the surface. Haithcote jumped into the water to help his friend and was electrocuted as well. Seeing the guests in distress in the shallow pond, park employee Daryl Robertson tried to help, but some good deeds are punished severely, especially at janky theme parks, and Robertson was electrocuted as well. The two good Samaritans died shortly after, while Benning survived with serious electrocution injuries. A subsequent investigation revealed it all could have been prevented if a simple circuit breaker had been installed on the electrical pumps under the pond. The merriment at the park continued, however, and about an hour later, Candy Taylor, age 32, decided to take just one more ride before the park closed. She chose the Flight Commander, a harmless-seeming ride that lifts riders off the ground in capsules that spin around. Taylor had been drinking and was alone in her compartment, so no one knows exactly how or why she slipped from her harness and safety belt and out of the pod but she may have been trying to get a look at the medical helicopters ferrying electrocution victim Timothy Benning to a hospital. No matter the reason, Taylor fell from the ride to the ground 70 feet below and died soon after. On March 24, 2022, 14-year-old Tyre Sampson visited Orlando's Icon Park with his football teammates, excited to ride the Orlando Freefall. Billed as the, the world's tallest drop tower, Freefall lifted riders 430 feet into the air, then dropped them. Tire, of, St. Lewis, was on spring break when he visited Icon Park and got on the Orlando Freefall ride, then described by its operators as the world's tallest freestanding drop tower. The ride took riders up and then dropped them nearly 400 feet at speeds that reach more than 75 miles per hour, according to the park. Sampson was nearly 100 pounds heavier than the ride's posted weight limit, but ride attendants strapped him in anyway. Freefall worked as promised, but when the car began decelerating, Sampson slipped out of his harness and fell to his death. A guest captured footage of the accident on his phone. He immediately uploaded the clip, and Sampson's death video was widely circulated. The investigation that followed concluded that the ride was mechanically sound, but that Sampson should not have been allowed to ride it. At 383 pounds, he was way over the ride's weight limit, and the ride's operator apparently loosened the safety harness to allow Samson on and overrode the harness warning light. The ride, which had opened only months before Tyre's death, has been closed since. Tyre's family had called for the ride to be taken down, and filed a still-pending wrongful death lawsuit against several entities including the park, the ride's operator, and the ride's manufacturer. The Orlando Freefall ride never should have been permitted to operate under those faulty conditions. Theme parks, their parent companies, and regulatory agencies must do better to prevent this kind of tragedy from happening to any other family. The statement from attorneys. The Haunted Castle was the site of the most deadly theme park accident in history. On May 11, 1984, at around 6.30 p.m., a fire broke out in the maze-like, walk-through attraction. Reportedly, a 14-year-old boy was using a cigarette lighter to navigate a dark corridor and set some padding on fire, although he was never identified. 
When the fire started, there were 29 guests and costumed employees trapped in the burning maze. There were few exit lights, no sprinkler system, and no smoke detectors. The fire spread quickly through the plywood and foam attraction, and the entire rickety structure was engulfed in flames within minutes. Eight teenagers died in the fire. Only one side of the structure, utilizing nine of the 17 trailers, was occupied at the time of the fire. During the subsequent criminal trial, the Jackson Township fire inspector testified that he had never inspected the castle. The township considered the castle a and quote, temporary structure and quote, even after it had been at the park for five years, based on the fact that the trailers were still on wheels. The castle lacked a building permit, a certificate of occupancy, fire and smoke detectors, and sprinklers despite repeated recommendations by the park's own safety consultants. There was a trial where the theme park's representatives contended that the fire was arson, and thus further safety precautions would not have saved any lives. No one was ultimately held criminally liable for the deaths. The families of four of the victims filed civil suits against Bally Manufacturing, the owner of Six Flags. Seven of the eight families later settled out of court for $2.5 million each. The eighth family chose to go to trial and was awarded $750,000. Water slides are not meant to be 169 feet tall, but that was the height of Verrucht, a water slide at Schlitterbahn Water Park in Kansas City that dropped riders down a nearly vertical, 17 story chute at speeds approaching 70 miles per hour, sending them up an incline and down another drop. They called it Verrucht, German for crazy. The slide was the brainchild of Schlitterbahn co owner Jeff Henry, who designed and built it with the help of the park's senior designer, John Schooley. Neither man had any background in mechanical engineering, but they did have a goal, to build the biggest, fastest water ride on Earth. After two years of construction and safety testing through a process that mostly involved trial and error with sandbags, the pair opened for Rucked to the public in 2014. Maybe the most amazing part of this story is that it took two years for someone to die on the crazy contraption. The unfortunate victim, 10-year-old Caleb Schwab, met a particularly gruesome end. The raft Caleb was riding in went airborne on the rise after the initial drop. Although Verrucht featured netting to keep people from flying out of the ride, Caleb hit a metal support and was decapitated. His head and body landed in the water chute and slid down the rest of the way, coming to a stop in the pool at the ride's bottom, where Caleb's brother and mother were waiting. The guests riding behind Caleb suffered facial injuries, perhaps from Caleb's decapitated head slamming into them. Afterwards legislators voted to change the law that had allowed Schlitterbahn to self-inspect, requiring that all the state's amusement park attractions be regularly inspected by the state. In November 2016, Schlitterbahn announced that Verrucht would be demolished. The Schwab family settled for approximately $20 million US dollars in early 2017. Settlements involving the other two riders who were injured in the accident were undisclosed. On February 22, 2019, criminal charges were dismissed because inadmissible evidence had been presented to the grand jury. There's a persistent rumor that no one dies at Disneyland. According to the story, in the event of a fatal heart attack or accident, vigilant Disney employees quickly shuttled the victim out of the park so the death certificate never reads Disneyland. But in 1973, an 18-year-old man pretty definitely died in the park. He and his 10-year-old brother decided to hide on Tom Sawyer Island to stay after the park closed. The plan worked, but a few hours after closing, the pair decided to swim back to the park proper. Taking his brother on his back, the man attempted to swim across the rivers of America, but it was too much for him and he slid under the water. His younger brother dog paddled around until Disney cast members rescued him. In 1983, another teenager drowned in the murky waters of Rivers of America. This guest at Disneyland's annual grad night was reportedly drunk and stole an inflatable boat from an employees-only section of the park. The joyride ended abruptly when he fell into the water and drowned. There were several other deaths that took place at River Country. The first was of an 11-year-old boy who contracted an amoebic infection of the brain from the water in 1980. Park officials noted that similar amoebic infections also occurred relatively frequently elsewhere and said it was an inherent problem, 
with freshwater lakes in warm weather and thus could not be blamed on the park's water system. Three other children had died similarly in Florida in the same month. The other death was another drowning, in 1989. In 2005, Disney officially announced that River Country would be closed permanently.